إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam Today, we are to talk about the greatest fitna ever, the greatest trial ever emerged in the face of this earth. Some of you may be sitting down right now and saying, it's far away from me. It's not going to happen in my time. You will be surprised to learn that Nabiullah Nuh, Prophet of Allah Nuh alayhi salam, has warned his people regarding this fitna, the fitna, the trial of the Antichrist. And no prophet but warned his people regarding this fitna, this trial. And the Prophet wasallam also doing his work with you and with me. And he's warning us in order to be prepared for this fitna and in order to learn about what we should do, what we should do, once this fitna emerges in the face of this earth. Brothers and sisters in Islam, last episode we finished with talking about the amount of trials and tribulations that a believer will go through in order to preserve his deen. To some extent, he will wish to be dead. But yet, this fitna is the greatest ever and greater than any trial and tribulation that you're going through. And brothers and sisters in Islam, there are certain ways for you to deal with this fitna. And that is why once we talk about this topic, we're not wasting time or we are talking about things that are not important. You never know. It may be the time of the Dajjal now. We have no idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knower, of the unseen. But the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith that is compiled by the son of Imam Ahmad, Abdullah, in his book, is Sunnah. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Il Dajjal will come in a time when people are not talking about him. When the speakers in the masajid are not talking about him. The khatib, the people who deliver the Friday sermon are not talking about him. When TV episodes like this one are not talking about the Antichrist. Brothers and sisters in Islam, just by talking about him, we could actually be deferring his fitna to the later time. Beside the fact, once we're talking about the Antichrist, you're passing this knowledge on. Guess who is listening right now? Could be your son, could be your daughter. And now they understand also that they have to pass that knowledge on to their offspring. And this way, these children that we have will be protected as well. In Hadith Abi Umamat al-Bahili, and the Hadith fi Mustadrak al-Hakim, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that there is no fitna in the face of this earth since Adam alayhi salam was created greater than the fitna of the Antichrist. And all the prophets, including Nuh alayhi salam, warned their people regarding their fitna. And here I am warning you. And if he emerges while I'm amongst you, I will take care of him for you. But if he emerges after my departure, each one of you will be responsible for himself. فَكُلُّ مُسْلِمْ حَجِيجُ نَفْسِهِ Every person, every Muslim will be in charge for himself. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died and this fitna yet to happen. This is a sign that must occur, must happen. And the fact, and this is actually the analogy that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used with the companions in some of the wording of this hadith, he said that he did not emerge in the 
previous nations before you. And I am the last messenger. And you are the last ummah. For sure, he will emerge amongst you. Let's learn. Why is he called the Messiah? And by the way, a lot of people out there, they say the Messiah. And this is wrong. Why he is called the Messiah? Now, the scholars said, based on the hadith that given that provides or uh, basically describe his physical appearance that he will be mamsuh, he will be braided. One side of his fa face will be braided. He has no eye, he has no eyebrows in one side of his face. Some wording say it's the right side, some wording says it's the left side, and both of them are authentic, but the one that talks about his right side are more indicating because that hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim. And also another wording that his eye will be like a floating grape, like a floating grape. He is one-eyed. The Dajjal is one-eyed. Then Rasul then why he was called Dajjal, the word Dajjal derives from the word Dajjal, which is lies. He will be very deceiving. He will be filled with lies. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hadith al-mustadrak, hadith Abi Umam al-Bahili, and hadith Hudayfa fi sahih Muslim as well, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that he will have two rivers with him. One river from Jannah and one river that is filled with fire. Or another wording, he will have a Jannah to his right and a fire to his left. And he will command people to enter to his Jannah. And once they enter this Jannah, it will be a fire. And once they enter to the fire, it will be a Jannah. He is so deceiving. He mixes the truth with, with falsehood. And that is why Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us not to even attempt to approach him. لا تقرب. Don't come near him. A person will come thinking that he has a strong iman, a strong faith that he is able to handle the Antichrist and as soon as he arrives there, he will deceive him. The only one that we know is the young man who will show up from Medina and he will come out to him and he will challenge him and he will cut him into two pieces and the Hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim, the Hadith of Sahih and this young man will not be deceived and he will not compromise, and he will tell him, you are the Antichrist that our messenger told us about. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to stay away from him because of the amount of lies that he has, because of the amount of deception that he can throw in you. A Bedouin, for example, will come to him, and the hadith in Nawas ibn Sam'an, fi sahih al-Imam Muslim, and he will tell him, ya A'rabi, O Bedouin, if I resurrect your father for, for you, bring your father back to life, will you believe that I am your Lord? He will say yes. Allah, then he will use one of the shayateen, one of the jinni, uh, in a form of his father, and the father will tell the Bedouin, follow him, he is your Lord, he is Allah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, a Dajjal will have a lot of things that will help him cast these, tribulation, these tribulations and these trials on people. He will be enabled. He will be empowered for a wisdom. Later on, we'll understand this wisdom if you hang in there, inshallah. But for a wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will equip him with supernatural powers that will actually deceive him to the extent that he will start saying, I am your Lord. I am God, worship me. At first, he will ask people to believe in him as a prophet. And later on, as people get deceived, he will develop himself and he will say, I am your Lord. And that is where the Prophet ﷺ told us, اعلموا أن ربكم ليس بأعور. سبحان الله. Learn and know that your Lord is not one-eyed. Basically, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us that if this is Allah, if this is God, this is the ilah, 
that created me and given me two eyes, he is unable to provide himself, to create himself or to make himself with two eyes. Because it's a clear sign in his face that he is one-eyed. Add to this, between his eyes will be written kafir or kufr, ka fa ra But listen to this carefully. Who's going to be able to read this? Who will be able to read this? Yaqra'uha kullu mu'min. You must be a believer. If you have not become a believer until the time of the Dajjal will come, you will be deceived by him. Only believers. And by the way, regardless if you are able to read or not, you will be able to recognize that sign. And by the way, regardless, and that is where the scholar said, whether you read Arabic or not, you will be able to recognize him. So his creation is contradicting to the fact that he could be a Lord, beside the fact that he has a sign in his face that indicates that he is not, uh, uh, he is a kafir. Add to this, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the people who are aware of the creed, أَعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ لَن تَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ حَتَّى تَمُوتُوا If you really know the attributes and the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you know that you will not be able to see Allah unless or until we die. We see Allah only. We are not equipped in this world to see Allah. And our example is Musa alayhi salam. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَى لِمِيقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ قَالَ رَبِّ أَرِنِي أَنظُرْ إِلَيْكَ When Musa alayhi salam came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he spoke with Allah, he said, Oh Allah, can I talk, to, can I see you? Can you enable me to see you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, you will not be able to see me. And Musa tried alayhi salam anyways and he fainted because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended in one of the mountain in a way that fits him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling you that his creation is lacking something, between his eyes is written a kafir and the fact that if you understand the proper creed that we are not equipped to see Allah in this Lord, then his claim is false. Let's continue talking about the Antichrist, Al-Masih al-Dajjal, after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. Ask Hoda. If you're still in Mecca or close by to Mecca, then you have to know that you are still in the state of Ihram. As long as it is not for sale, mm -hmm. then he does not have to pay the kafir. Forbade praying witter, similar to Maghrib prayer. Mm -hmm. So whoever prays witter three rak'ahs and sitting after the second rak'ah as if he's praying Maghrib prayer, this is forbidden, this is haram. To euthanasia is permissible with animals but not with human beings. If an animal is suffering, killing an animal for a legitimate reason is permissible. Both uh, are acceptable, but the majority say that after the rakur is the place of uh, qunut. But both was reported. Have a question or concern on your mind? Hoda TV decided, based on popular demand, he will be bringing you an additional episode of Ask Hoda with Sheikh Azim bin Luqman al-Hakim, live from Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole lifespan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to the inevitable journey. Before the break, we are talking about the greatest trial ever that a Muslim will be exposed to. A lot of people are skeptical from such hadith and revelation that we have in our deen. Let them be skeptical. But for you, Get ready for it. 
It could happen, occur in your time. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a serious business that you are to learn about it. It's part of your creed. It's part of believing in اليوم الآخر, the hereafter. Before the break, we talked about the capabilities and the capacity that this man, the Antichrist, Al-Masih al-Dajjal, will have in his position in order to try, in order to place people to his fitna, in order to expose people to his fitna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enable him, will give him a command over the heaven as Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith Abi Umamat al-Bahili fi mustadrak al-Hakim, he will command the heaven, the sky to rain and it will rain. He will command the earth to produce and it will produce. He will cruise all of earth. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith in Nawas ibn Sam'an fi sahih Muslim radiyallahu alayhi nawas that there is no place in earth that the Antichrist will step into except two areas, except two cities, Mecca and Medina. And he will be so swift in cruising earth. As the Prophet وسلم, described him, like a cloud being driven by a strong wind. He will go around earth so quickly and he will go and he will spread his corruption and his deception all over the world, seeking followers, seeking people to believe in him, being the Ilah, being the God, being the Rabb. And if you have not developed Iman, if you have not became a believer until the time that the Dajjal emerges, brothers and sisters in Islam, you're truly exposing yourself to the fitna, truly exposing yourself to the fitna. Of course, Ar Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us what to do. He told us, if you learn that he is in this city, leave. Don't even try because he will get to you because of the amount of powers that he had. Also, the amount of need that will be present at the time Earth, as the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in Hadith in Nawas, in Hadith Abi Umama al-Bahili fi Mustadrak al-Hakim, for three years will be a lot of drought, a lot of hunger in earth. People will be so needy and he will have the bread, he will have the food for them, but he will request something from you in return, your deen, your religion, your religion. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told you to stay away from him because he will get to you because of your needs and also because of the amount of capacity, capabilities that jinn will be his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place a lot of things in his command for a wisdom that I will explain the next episode. Don't miss the next episode. I will give you the wisdom why the Antichrist was given these powers, the power to heal, the power to give gold and silver, the power to command the, 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 the heaven to rain and it will rain, the power to command the earth to give harvest and produce and it will give harvest and produce, the power to kill someone and bring him back to life, the power to resurrect somebody and have somebody take the shape of that person to the living, like as I quoted earlier for the Bedouin, brothers and sisters in Islam, it the Dajjal, the Antichrist, will spend 40 days in earth. Hadith in Nawas ibn Sam'an, fi sahih al-Imam Muslim, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Dajjal will stay in earth for 40 days. The first day will be as long as one year. The second day will be as long as one month. The third day will be as long as one week. As for the rest of the days, like our days. Look what the companions, Rudwanullahi alayhim, were concerned about. 
Look at their concern, brothers and sisters in Islam, because they knew this is the stuff that will save you from the trials and the tribulations. O Messenger of Allah, what about the day that is as long as one year? Will we pray only five daily prayers? Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, اقدروا له قدره. No, see the time that is between each salah and keep praying, keep praying. So you're going to end up praying more salawat in this year than you normally pray in one day. Brothers and sisters in Islam, as I quoted earlier, that it Dajjal, the Antichrist, is going to say, I am your Lord. In spite of the fact that he has lackness, shortage, he has weakness in his creation. Number one, he is so ugly in creation. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described for us in authentic hadith that he is extremely fat, short, afhaj, bow-legged, and barren, he will have no children. Alhamdulillah, he will not gonna have, he's not going to have any children, offspring. Brothers and sisters in Islam, his eye will be poked like a floating grape. Now, if you are really God, if you are really Allah, why didn't you go and fix your eye? You're giving me two eyes and I'm a created and you are a creator. Enough that is written between his, in his forehead, his two eyes are kafir or kafara. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described it, uh, uh, pronounced it this way, kafara. Every believer, I stress believer, will be able to read it. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the fitna, and it's really summed up. If I am to detail what's written in the books regarding this trial, this tribulation of the Antichrist, three, four, five episodes will not suffice, will not be sufficient. But in brief, I urge you to read more about it, but read the authentic about it because there are a lot of fairy tales also and also there are a lot of people who played with the text. Read the text according to the understanding of the three virtuous generation of the Muslims and eminent scholars who are trusted to learn and to take your deen after them, to take your religion after them. Very quickly, inshallah, and again, I would like you to join me the next episode because I'll give a little bit of perspective why the Antichrist was equipped with all these powers for a wisdom. Why? We'll answer this question inshallah the next episode and then the following episode bi idnillah ta'ala we will connect Al Mahdi with the Antichrist and before the second coming of Jesus, peace be upon him, like we promised in the last episodes. I have not forgotten that. Brothers and sisters in Islam, how to protect yourselves from the fitna of the Antichrist. Remember, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yaqra'uha kullu mu'min. Be a believer. Believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You see, you got to understand this. Your heart is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that fitna that you are exposed to the fitna of the antichrist will be your heart is the limb that will be exposed to it now if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect your heart you cannot imagine how obvious how obvious to everyone the lies of this man here he is one eye Kafir written between his two eyes. He's ugly in creation. Obvious that he's lying. But yet, he will be followed by a lot of people. A lot of people. You know what, what is the quality of those people, brothers and sisters? Muslims too. You know what is the quality of those people, brothers and sisters in Islam? Because they do not believe in Allah. They have not established 
faith in their hearts they have not done good deeds that can protect their hearts badiru bil a'mali fitana work implement the deen in your lives allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from this fitna brothers and sisters in islam follow the advice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and do not come near him if you know that he is in this town travel call 1-800 free ticket go somewhere else don't expose yourself to the fitna and this is the attitude of believers by the way لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو لا تتمنوا الموت because you don't know a person will come thinking that he is strong and he can handle him you never know because that heart could break and you could fall in this fitna like the rest of the people. But follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ in what he said in his advice that stay away from this person and from his fitna. If you can find a refuge in Mecca and Medina, do so. Rasul said that the angels will be guarding those two cities from him entering there. You could actually, if you can go there during that fitna, this, these two areas or these two towns or the, those two cities, the holy uh, blessed uh, places will be protected zones from the Dajjal. But I don't want people to think that everybody there will be protected. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause an earthquake to shake. And the hadith is sahih. Earthquake to shake in Mecca and Medina that the hypocrites and the disbelievers who are in Mecca and Medina will fear and they will leave Mecca and Medina. And only the believers will stay because they know the Antichrist is outside. So once the hypocrites and the disbelievers leave Medina, guess who's going to hunt them outside the Antichrist? Brothers and sisters in Islam, the last advice before we close, insha'Allah, fawatihul kah. Reciting the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, reciting the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, there are authentic hadith that whoever recites these and memorizes these two verses, insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him from the trial of the Antichrist. And what about the whole surah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you more protection, insha'Allah. Add to this, after each tashahud, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, as Abdullah ibn Abbas quoted in Sahih Imam Muslim, that he used to say, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ فِتْنَةِ الْمَسِيحِ الدَّجَّالِ I seek refuge with you from the evil of the fitna of the Antichrist. Don't miss the next episode of the inevitable journey. We're going to talk about the wisdom behind him being equipped with all these powers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open or what you From big to small shall today be revealed Your deeds shall then be weighed in a scale This shall determine if you pass or fail and sisters I'd like to say ask for forgiveness and do that today